Welcome to this quick start guide to StageFX Pro for Daz Studio. And StageFX Pro is a light preset and stage prop for Daz Studio created by Dreamlight. And this is just a must have add on for Daz Studio. We take a look at this package here, and this is going to blow you away when you see all the features here. This is the folder where you'll find StageFX Pro, and we have all these folders in here for StageFX Pro starting here and all through here. And they're all packed full of different presets. And so this is a huge package. And there are just an infinite number of possibilities with this prop. And I'm going to show you how to use StageFX Pro throughout this video here. And I'm going to highlight some of the user-friendly features you'll find here. So the first thing you'd want to do is first get a hold of StageFX Pro. If you type in StageFX Pro, as it's shown here at the DAS3 website, you'll, you'll find StageFX Pro. You want to download that, get it installed into your content library for DAS Studio. And once you do that, in order to find your product, what you would do is go into this drop down menu here within the content tab. And you want to be in either view folders as a tree or view folders as a list. And then you want to come down here to the studio folder. Within the Dreamlight folder, you'll find StageFX Pro with all those folders I showed you just a moment ago. Now, the first place you'd want to start is right up here at the top with the presets. And within here, you will see that we have a lot of presets to choose from. Now, the beam preset is unique, and I'm going to talk about this a little later. But all these other presets here are pretty much the same. They're just customized differently. So if you take a look at this preset here, let's say as opposed to this preset here, you're going to see that they look completely different, but however, they're just customized differently. All right, so StageFX Pro is highly customizable, and that's where all these other folders come into play. So for now, what I'm going to do is just load up this 3-high preset. And as that's loading up, I'm just going to pause the video. So right now we have our preset loaded up into our scene here. And one thing I do want to talk about is some of these animation features that you'll find within StageFX Pro. Now, if we take a look at here, we have a couple beams, and these beams are fantastic. They look wonderful. And then we have the fan in the background here. And what's nice about these beams is that you have these beams that you can use in any scene that you create within Dash Studio. And that's all part of the beam preset that I talked about earlier. So this is a very nice feature here within StageFX Pro that you have these beams that you have access to for not only the prop you see here, but in all your scenes. And I'm going to talk about how you can utilize those beams in some of your other scenes. And these beams are really complex. They're the way they're structured. And let me go into my scene tab here. And let me just talk about how you would go about moving these beams first of all. Right here we have our light beams. So here's the StageFX Pro node, the top node. If you come down here and locate your beams, you'll see light beam A, B, C, and D. By clicking on light beam A, I'll get this transform gizmo. And then from here, I can just move my beam around. But one thing I want to show you is that wherever I move this beam around, we're not seeing any distortion here. The beam still looks natural almost at any angle that you turn the beam. And that is due to the way it's designed. And if you take a look at, in here at what we have, this is a pretty complex light beam. And that is due to the fact that it had to be made this way in order to make it animatable. All right, if that's a word, animatable. All right. But anyway, StageFX Pro was created with animation in mind. And so what I want to do now is just talk about some of the animation possibilities here. I just want to talk about how you would go about animating some of these elements here, the light beams and the fan in the background. And you can even animate the fog. So we'll take a look at that as well. But the first thing I want to take a look at is the light beams here. So with light beam A selected, if I open up my timeline, and I do also want to show you in the parameters tab too, if you don't like using the transform gizmo, if we scroll down here, there's some unique parameters here where we have tilt light, we have the turn light property. Let me just undo those two. But the first thing you want to do is I, I want to create a looping animation. So I'm just going to go to my last keyframe and I'm going to create a keyframe manually. All right. And we don't have an animation yet. 
But what I've done here was I've created my last keyframe. So I have a keyframe on the last frame. And now if I just animate this right about in the center, we're going to have a looping animation here. So I'm going to move the beam around like this and then move it up like that. So if I go back to my first keyframe and press play, this is going to loop around like this. So very nice. And if I stop here for a moment and just go to my render settings, if I'm in OpenGL mode and I press render, look how quickly that renders. So you can render animations very quickly with this. And these light beams do look really nice even in OpenGL mode render. So you can render these things. You can use this to overlay in video. And you can even render these in still images and composite them with your photo editing applications too. So we got the first beam rendered. And we can do the same thing with this beam here. So if I click on light beam B, we're not going to see anything. Light beam B is turned off right now. There's no beam C, but if we click on light beam D. We can simply just do the same thing. We can go to our last keyframe here. We can create a keyframe and then we can go to about the halfway point. And I'm just going to move that up around here and cross that with this beam here like that. So we have that's going to loop around like that. So now we have two beams animated. Press play. Take a look. Really nice effect going on there. And then in addition to that, I want to make sure I'm on my first keyframe. I'm going to move the camera in a little bit on the fan. And we can even animate the fan here a little bit. Now the reason why I went to the first keyframe here is because if I move my camera somewhere along the middle of my timeline, I'm going to animate my camera. I didn't want to animate my camera. I just want my camera to be still. We can go to the fan here. And if we go to fan tube, we find offset fan. You'll see a property in here called rotate fan. And I can set this to zero here. So I'm just at a zero position here. And I'm going to go to my last keyframe. And I'm just going to make this. 720. So this is in degrees. So this is going to give me two rotations. And I'm just going to hit enter. And now I can go all the way back to my first keyframe again. We can press play. And then we have an animated fan along with two light beams here. Notice that the fan is going counterclockwise. But if I go to the last keyframe, and if I make this a negative here, if I make this negative 720, hit enter, then the fan will rotate clockwise for me. Take a look at that. So very nice. We got all those animation possibilities there. And then we do have the fog too. We can animate the fog. So we have fog layer one, which we can rotate the entire fog layer if we want to. By doing the same thing, I can go to the last frame here. I can add a keyframe, maybe midway here. We'll make this 180. And I'm just going to animate one layer of this. Hopefully we'll be able to see that getting animated though. And then Go back to the first frame, press play. We have the fog will be animated too. And it's difficult to see with all the other lights going on, but the, the fog is being animated. And in fact, if I, if I go to the mid, go to the end, add a keyframe right here. And I'm just going to set this at some kind of random point. And fog layer three, go back to the first keyframe, last keyframe. Midway point, now we're definitely going to see things being animated here with the fog. So let me play that. And notice the fog is being animated. And this gives us an, an effect of some motion in the fog layers. Okay, so that's just some of the animation possibilities there. I just wanted to go over that. And let's just head back to the content tab. 